Hey golfers, I'm Drew Mahold with Second Swing Golf, and today I'm joined by a very special guest. This is Taylor Ledwine. Taylor is a member of the online fitting and support team, online master fitter here at Second Swing. We're very lucky to have her with us. Uh, you'll see her more on the channel here in the future, but today we wanted to give an introduction. And uh, also, we're going to talk about Taylor's clubs in her bag. But Taylor, first, uh, if you could just kind of tell the viewers about your game, about your experience playing golf, and um, you know what makes you so qualified to talk about equipment. And then, uh, I mean, you have a pretty good pedigree as a player, too. Yeah, so I started kind of playing golf, picking it up when I was about two. Okay. Um, started playing competitively, well, getting lessons when I was five and competitively when I was six. Also been around it for a long yeah. time. It's pretty crazy to think about. Uh, I've spent most of my life playing. Um, I've been lucky enough to travel all over the U.S. and even to Puerto Rico this summer or this spring. I went mm -hmm. to the U.S. Women's Amateur Four Ball. Oh, um, wow. Been to six USGA events, I think. This summer, I went to the amateur at uh, Chambers Bay, made it to the round of 32, farthest I've ever been uh, in an individual event. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. My dad caddies for me. And oh, that's cool. Yeah, so just getting that experience is good. Um, so got a good understanding of golf that way. Yeah. You know, kind of how important it is uh, to have the right clubs, right. right fit for you. Just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, yeah, I'm on the online fitting team, just kind of started doing fitting, so it's pretty exciting. Uh, a lot of training went into it, a lot of learning about yeah. the equipment itself because I didn't know a lot of equipment before I started working at Second Swing. So kind of understanding it more and why my stuff works for me is really right. nice. Yeah, that definitely happened for me too when I started. And it was, I mean, I'm not going through the fitting training that you guys are, but uh, just going through and, and understanding the different, you know, industrial hosel stuff with a, with a driver, for example, or the lie angle, the, you know, shaft flex and how much that matters. I mean, it, it all goes, uh, plays a big part. So obviously you've had a pretty, a lot more extreme uh, training uh, in terms of all that stuff than I have, but uh, the 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 fun stuff here is is the clubs that you're playing because yeah. um, it we've gone through and done a few of these kind of what's in the bag segments with uh, other you know fitters and staff members here at Second Swing and it's mm -hmm. always fun to see the different quirks or different uh, maybe fitting adjustments that they make or things like that. So we've got your bag here. We've got some fun head covers too. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but why don't we start? We'll start at the bottom of the bag. We'll start okay. with the putter here. Okay. Um, so talk about the putter, what model, and and what went into choosing that model. So I play the Scotty Cameron Newport uh, Studio yeah. 2.0 Select. Um, I've really experienced with a lot of different putters. Yeah. I, that's probably the weakest part of my game up okay. until about two or three years ago. Um, actually, Larry from here fit yeah. me and just kind of got me into the right like loft of the putter, which I think a lot of people don't think about of how important that right. is. Um, so I play this, really like it. Yeah. I switched from a mallet. Uh, just because it's a little less for my eye to focus on yeah. and I can just focus directly on the line there. Right. So I I really enjoy it. It's been a great putter. Mm -hmm. um, I think I've used it for about four seasons now yeah. and haven't switched. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, it's, it's funny that you mentioned the going from a mallet to a blade because so much of putting and Larry will tell you the same thing. It's all, it's so much of it is about like, the, the mental aspect and how mm -hmm. much you see and what you like to look at, what you don't like to look at. So uh, funny, to, I mean, and I'm, I'm, the, I'm the opposite. I can't, I can't do a blade. Yeah. I, need, I need the big club head. So uh, it's funny that you're kind of the opposite in that respect. And I think one thing with the putter is hard for some people to go from a blade to a mallet or back and forth. Yeah. Um, so just kind of like, if that's what you need, just kind of finding something in the middle and you always want it to fit your eye and like, yeah. I mean, it's not so much cosmetics, but if you're not comfortable looking at the putter, you're not right. gonna be comfortable putting yeah. it. Yeah, it's so, a confidence thing. Right? Yeah, I mean, it took me a while to grow into a blade, yeah. but I like it now. All right, so sticking with short game here, let's mm -hmm. go from putter to the wedges. I see. So I have I got three. That, is that that like, kind of jet black finish around those? Yeah, guys? so I much prefer the jet black. Okay. So I have the three jet black SM9s. I think I've played all the way from the five or six SMs. Okay. Uh, I just really like the spin I get, trajectory, yeah. everything off of them. And I like that they offer the jet black option because when I'm hitting my wedges, sometimes I get distracted with the sun reflecting oh, off. Yeah, so sure. I don't focus on the ball and more focusing right. on the club. Um, but I play a 58, a 54 and a 50. Um, it's good gapping for me right. for distance and stuff wise. I really only use my 58 around the green, which isn't ideal. I'm <laughs> working to, you know, use yeah. more of the little bump and run, but yeah, I love the Volkies. I think mm -hmm. they're a great, you know, wedged having the bag right. and I'm going to be upgrading soon just to some fresh ones because I do play quite a bit. So right. the grooves are wear pretty easy. Yeah, That's something that maybe the viewers would be curious about too, is just how, is there a recommendation? I know you play a lot of golf, so it's maybe different than the average, maybe weekend warrior out there. Right. But, um, you know, how often are you thinking about 
changing your wedges? You know, is it a certain number of rounds, or is it just kind of you see the face on those on the grooves, and you're like, okay, this is it's about time. So for me, for how much I play in practice, I'm probably supposed to get three sets a year. Yeah. With Which the is a cost lot. of wedges, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not getting three sets. And like I said, I use my 58 the most, so like I could look right now and tell you, oh sure, just with the way my face looks, I could get a new 58, 54 yeah. and 50, I could get by with. Right. Just because now going into the off season, it won't be so much wear and tear on them. Yeah. Still practicing, but not as frequently, and just on the mats doesn't give it quite as much wear and tear. Right. Sure. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. Well, so from the Voki SM9s, um, I see some Mizuno irons in the bag there. So uh, those have been very popular for yeah. uh, a lot of players out there. So you got Mizuno. Let's talk about those ones. Yeah. So I have the 921 Forged. Okay. I do play. So someone my height would probably play half to an inch short. Okay. I only play a quarter. Okay. Just because of my lie angle and everything. And then I think I'm supposed to be like an orange dot, which is two uh -huh. degree flat. Yeah, yeah. But with the length, I only play one degree. Okay. And I love these. Yeah. <laughs> they are a little bit heavier. I used to play the I-210s. Yep, yep. These are a little bit heavier, which I like. Gives me a little bit more distance. Um, and they're a little bit slimmer, which I like. So they're not a blade. I can't play a blade. Yeah. I can't. I really struggle to hit it. But they're nice to look down at, you know, and they're a little bit skinnier, and I feel like they're pretty forgiving. I mm -hmm. wouldn't switch now. Yeah, I mean, they are that that really um, that classic example of a club that gives you a little bit more distance than mm -hmm. maybe a blade, um, but you can still get a really good feel out of it. I think that's the aspect that a lot of players, when uh, they might be looking at a blade or have played a blade, but they realize I, I can't because I need more forgiveness or I need more distance, whatever it might be. Right. And a club like that is, they have it. I mean, Mizuno forged irons, right? That's the the... the top of the echelon in terms of feel, mm -hmm. but then you still get some performance out of an iron like that. Yeah, I played ping all my life, um, just happened to come in one day and be trying out like a fairway wood, and I'm like, let's just look at something different just for fun, and I fell in love with these. I think I yeah. hit three shots maybe with really? the seven iron, and I'm like, yep, sold. So then I got these on order. <laughs> there you go, perfect. So, yeah. I, I gotta say it, I, there's, there's players that that can happen to, and then there's mm -hmm. other players like uh, myself where I need to hit five or six different clubs and hit a bunch of shots. And then yeah. I thought, okay, this is finally, I, I guess I'll take this one. <laughs> that is one thing. I mean, just kind of getting into fitting, but when I get fit, I come here usually and get fit and I only hit three swings, you know, yeah. like with my fair, my hybrids, I came in and got fit. I was here for like five minutes just cause it's all feel for me. I'm not yeah. very analytical. So if I like the feel of it, then I know yeah. out on the course, I'm going to like it. So I, yeah, and that's something it. that it should be noted that a player can come in here and not be so analytical and might hit a few shots in the bay. They might get a couple of numbers here and there like, okay, this is the one I want. Mm -hmm. Or it might be a super analytical person and say, I need to hit all these shots. Here's the metrics I'm looking at or here's what I want to see. So um, we can accommodate all of those people. Right. Um, There's no right answer to right. get fit. It's just all what you're comfortable with and, you know, kind of having that communication with your fitter of this is kind of what I'm looking for today is yeah. really important to be able to find what's right for you. Sure. So um, you mentioned uh, you mentioned to me beforehand mm -hmm. an upgrade potentially happening here at hybrid. But um, so talk about maybe just the, the transition and the gapping you have between irons and then up to your hybrids because they're a very important spot of the bag here. Yeah. So I'm just getting an updated of the ping. So I'm getting the 425s. Okay. Um, I'm very unorthodox and I only carry up to a seven iron. Okay. So I just don't like the feel of a six iron. I don't like the length of it. Yeah. So I go to a hybrid and with the hybrids, I'm getting good spin with the six iron hybrid. Um, so it's not really, you know, kind of taking away from yeah. my game. When I hit it off the tee, I mean, if I show you my six hybrid, it's 30 degrees. Yeah. It's funny because everyone will look down at it and you can just see how open There's it a is ton of to loft address. There too. Yeah. yeah. So some people don't like that. But for me, I just like the feel and the contact off the hybrid a little yeah. bit better. It does give me a little bit more of a gap. Yeah. Um, but nothing I can't work with. Right. So. And, and that's you know that's best for your game, and you've mm -hmm. discovered that, right? So it's one of those things. Uh, there's a lot of players probably like you that really almost need uh, to get rid of a six or a five or a four iron. And yeah. it's a it's a matter of making. I bet you with that hybrid, you probably get a little more loft, a little more height and launch mm -hmm. uh, when you need something like that uh, versus maybe a six or five iron with your uh, 921 forged irons. Well, and that's the thing. When I was hitting the six iron, I wasn't really getting the loft, so I wasn't holding greens. So right. It was just kind of running out. And some people will run into that, but they don't like the look of this hybrid because yeah. it is a little bit more open, so it's weird to the eye. Um, but if you need more height, it's definitely mm -hmm. a really good option to go with because sure. they are more forgiving as well. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so I could hit it off the toe of that and hit 
you know, still turn out fine because right. it's more forgiving. Yeah, you're going to be able to hold the green, you know, even if you maybe hit it off the heel or off the toe a little bit like I tend to do. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, moving into the fairy woods now. So yeah. this is another part, a tricky part of the bag for a lot of golfers mm -hmm. where, especially off, maybe not a tee, but off the turf, getting the ball into the air off the turf can be really tricky for a lot of players. So what uh, clubs do you have in the bag? So I just switched actually in this. I got rid of my three hybrid because... I didn't get any loft with it, yeah. so I got a seven wood, okay. which are becoming really yes, popular. Yes, they are. And some people will carry a three hybrid and a seven wood in their bag yeah. um, because the, they get kind of the same distance, but seven wood gets a little bit higher in the air. So right. for carry or the three hybrid, they want to roll it up. Mm -hmm. So I got a seven wood. I've played it in one tournament. I got it like the day before and I was like, you know what? Why not? Yeah. And it's great. Yeah. It's, it's the 425 max. And it's just, I get it in the air way easier. Yep. I'm way more confident with it. Um, so it's been, you know, a great purchase. I practice with it. And yeah. it's, seven woods are a really great option yeah. for people who struggle maybe with the longer irons mm -hmm. or just don't like a longer hybrid. Right. It's a, what a lot of people are going to. I know to. it's been super popular, especially the last couple of years, really. I think it's mm -hmm. become, and then there's even, I think, I believe there's a nine wood available too with the D425. Yeah. So there's a ton of options there for someone to even have multiple of those. You can go nine, five and three or seven to three or mm -hmm. you know whatever it might be, but those high lofted fairy woods are becoming really popular there because there's almost like the hybrid is, you know, f compared to like a six or seven iron, you can get that extra loft, extra height. But even if you're going three or four hybrid need even more launch, more height, mm -hmm. that's where the, the seven wood or a nine wood can come into play. Yeah, and you actually will see a lot of tour players now switching to oh, them, yeah. depending on the course. You know, like I said, if you have more of a carry distance, they're gonna be playing this rather than right. a, long iron or hybrid yeah. so mm -hmm. yeah it's been a great addition to my bag and i will be sticking with it i like that i like that so uh, after the seven wood mm -hmm. you got uh got a big stick or how i what's got the a top three of the, wood what's yeah. the top of the bag look so like? i've got a three wood it's a tsi three um, i've had it for two years maybe okay i am someone who really struggles with three wood off the yeah. ground so i think i'm going to be looking at some new options gotcha. just I like it. It's yeah. a good club off the tee for me, but off the fairway, it's just hard for me to sure, get, get sure. in there. Okay. And then my driver is yep. very interesting. <laughs> okay, let's so see. So I it. used to play a 47 inch driver. Really? Yeah, until they changed the club rule. Right. Just because I like to get a lot of club speed and mm -hmm. I like to, like on par fives, be able to have that option. Yeah. Um, so I had it just for the extra distance. Mm -hmm. uh, it was a really good option. Right. So now I switched. I I'm pretty sure the rule now is 46. Yes. So I have a 46 inch. There you go. Um, but I play a 10 and a half uh, LST. You yep. can't see it because I have this set. <laughs> it's a 10 and a half set to a 12. Okay. Set to a draw bias with lead tape on the heel. Okay. So wow. So you're really so playing I miss for right. That. Yeah. Yeah. So you're <laughs> you're trying to avoid the right side of the golf course. Yeah. So setting. my okay. big miss is right. Yeah. Um, but this driver, I don't even know, two years maybe. Yeah. I've had it for two years and it's been a great addition. Yeah. Um, I did lose a little bit of distance with the with the club shortening oh, sure. rule, yeah. but um, I feel like I get the maximum amount that I'm going to be able to get out of this club. When I do miss, I do still miss right, but it's not as bad just because of the setup of my club. Yeah. Um, but the lead tape is a great option for people who might not want to upgrade, you know, to a draw bias, but really helps in. You do notice it, which is so crazy because it's just this little strip here. Yeah. Um, but it's a great addition. And the 425s, I'm I'm very loyal to now yeah, with yeah. the hybrids coming. So I yeah. love Ping and what they've been doing with their hybrids and stuff like that. Yeah. I mean, it's it's one of those. We've had a couple of videos on the, on the channel before about about lead tape and how. Mm -hmm. So because it's funny, you have the LST club head, but they do have an SFT yeah. model available, too. So. Uh, to kind of make your own SFT out of the LST, you just threw some weight in the heel with that lead tape and you're creating uh, the draw bias for yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's it's cool to see that type of setup because that's you know one that a golfer might come in and get fit and that might be something that they need, but right. they would have no idea coming in, have no idea. They just know that they miss right. Yeah. And the last thing they're gonna think of is, oh, I'm gonna put this strip of lead tape on here. I'm gonna uh, move my, my loft up to 12. Mm -hmm. I mean, these, all these little things that you're doing. So for me, I didn't really like the SFT at setup. So okay. that's kind of why I went with oh, sure. the LST. Visually, yeah, yeah, you probably see a lot of that weight in the heel. and Yeah, yeah. and it just kind of set up at me for feel-wise, not only visually, it was just a little bit weird. I'm with the Max, just didn't work real well with my spin. Okay. So the SFT, or the LST, sorry, gives me kind of that square setup yeah. feel. Um, but then the weight and the lead tape, I don't really feel or see it set up. So 
it was just a good option for me to go with. Sure. Yeah. Well, that was, um, we got a lot of brands in the in yeah. play here, <laughs> but I, we see we're, we're leaning to, starting to lean towards ping at the top. Yeah. Uh, and then we've got the Mizuno irons, we've got the Vokey wedges. We've got some really solid options, I think, in the bag, Taylor. So a uh, very cool look inside the bag of Taylor Leadwine. Uh, I guess the last thing to say is, well, I know it's entering the off season now, but mm -hmm. when things pick up again next year, good luck in all your events. Thank and you. We will be seeing you more on the channel. So uh, golfers, make sure if you have any questions for Taylor, make sure you drop them in the comments. Otherwise, Taylor, thank you for joining. This was just really cool to see. Yeah, thank you for having me.